Hello YouTube Paramax here, and today on Tutorial Tuesday, I'll be covering basic, series, and parallel circuits. Now if you haven't already watched the first tutorial about Ohm's Law and Watt's Law, and the difference between volts, amps, ohms, and watts, I recommend you go and watch that video first, since this is just going to continue off the knowledge base for that video. Alright, now let's cover the simplest type of circuit ever. A simple circuit. All you need to do to make a simple circuit is get a power source, a load, and connect up the wires. Once the circuit is made, electrons will flow from the negative end of your battery or your power source through the load and back up into the positive. Notice how the word circuit has the word sir in it, just like the word circle. You can easily remember a circuit in that way. Now notice that current is only going to flow when the circuit is complete, or in other words, when the circuit is closed. If we were to open up the circuit, all the current will stop flowing. Now this circuit we would call an open circuit. You can see it has an open spot right here. Once we close the circuit again, then current will flow. Alright, now you're probably wondering why I mentioned that electricity flows from the negative end of a battery and through the load upwards and into the positive. Seems a bit counterintuitive, right? Well, no worries, it's been fixed. And now it's even more counterintuitive. See, electrons are actually negatively charged, so what happens is that there are actually a surplus of electrons at the negative part of your power supply, and these electrons want to get away from each other and they want to go to a place of more positivity, which is up here. And this is where potential difference comes in, or voltage, the difference between the electrons down here and the lack of electrons up here. Now I've talked more about this in my previous video, so again, if you haven't seen that yet, go back and click here to see that. Anyway, it is proper to say that electrons will flow through the circuit up through the load and into the positive. However, back when we were first experimenting with electricity and developed all of the mathematical formulas to use with electricity, we didn't understand this and we barely even understood what atoms were, let alone electricity. And well, we thought that electricity goes from the positive end of a battery or any power source and down through the load and into the negative. And we built all the infrastructure around this idea. Turns out they were wrong. However, more recently we've actually rectified this and developed a distinction between electron current and conventional current. Now conventional current, we just pretend like it's a positive charge that flows through a load and into the negative. Although in reality that's not actually what happens, we just pretend. And well, because all the formulas still work, why not? Alright, now let's cover series circuits. You can see a series circuit is called a series because all of the parts are in a series. Now these types of circuits have some pretty interesting properties in that the voltage is divided amongst all of these parts and the current through all of those parts is the same. Now these types of circuits are commonly used in large chains of many identical things where the power supply is too high a voltage for powering any one of those parts individually. You'll see this type of circuit a lot with Christmas lights during the holidays and LED strip lights and other types of, you know, long chains of things. You also see this technique used a lot with screw and LED bulbs, especially the cheaper variety. Alright, now that we've covered simple and series circuits, let's go over parallel circuits. Now parallel circuits are actually the most common type of circuit to find in electronics because the voltage across all the loads is the same as the supply. You can see I have all three of my loads here and they all have the same voltage across them and so they're all going to be drawing power individually. So the next property of parallel circuits is that because all the circuits are being powered individually by the power supply, if we were to break the connection to any one of these parts, or any two of these parts, there'll still be current flowing through the remaining parts. And of course if we recreate the connection, current will start to flow again. However, it's important to mention that because each load draws its own amount of current from the power supply, this current will add up as you go down the line to the source of the power. And you can see right here where the power supply is, we've got a lot of current flowing. Usually when you design a power supply, 
you make sure that the wires that are coming out of your power supply can handle the current. Look at this. Look how many ground wires there are to handle the current coming back to the power supply. And look how many orange and red wires there are to carry the voltages throughout the whole, throughout the whole computer. And here's another place where you'll see series circuits a lot. See this cable right here? It goes off to one connector that goes to something inside your computer, a hard drive in this case, and two other Molex connectors. And you can actually see how they're all daisy chained together with a parallel circuit. And all the voltages across all these connectors will be the same, all powered by one single power supply that's inside of this large unit. Now although it is possible to draw circuits like I showed before as loops with a power supply somewhere, often it's not very practical when you're talking about really large circuit schematics. This is actually a much more practical way of drawing it, where I have a single power supply, or a single voltage source in this case, here, here, and here, and I have a ground terminal, or what's called a common, between all of these points. It's called a common because all the voltages in the circuit are relative to this point. Remember, voltage is a potential difference. A difference between this point and some other random point in the circuit. So we call this the common, or the ground, and we call voltages in the circuit VCC, or VDD, depending on if it's positive or negative polarity. So now that's out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into the math. Your favorite part. <laughs> Alright, now that I've written out what formulas we'll be using for this part, you can see that I've added two new ones. The series resistor formula and the parallel resistance formula. Let's look at series resistors first, and what happens when you apply 12 volts across these three resistors. Now obviously you're going to have a lot less current than if you just connected any one of these resistors across the voltage, but how are we going to figure out what the current is precisely? Well luckily we can just use this really simple formula right off here, the series resistor formula, to figure this out. Now what it tells us to do is just add up the resistors. And as you can see when we add 8 plus 10 plus 4, we end up with a total of 22 ohms. Alright, now you can just solve Ohm's law and figure out what the current's going to be. Alright, I figured out just a little over 500 milliamps. Alright, so I hope you can see how we can simplify these three resistors down to just one giant resistor where we can then easily calculate what the current's going to be. Alright, now let's do the same thing for the parallel resistance formulas. I want to figure out what the total current is going to be, but I have so many resistors here and I just want to simplify them down to one giant resistor to make it easy to use Ohm's law. So let's go ahead and use the parallel resistor formula to simplify these resistors down to just one large one. Just take 1 divided by the first resistor, which is 8, plus 1 over 10, plus 1 over 4, and you'll get a total of 0.475 after crunching the numbers. Then we just take the inverse of that, and we'll end up with a total resistance of 0 0.1 ohms. Now there are going to be some rounding errors because I've just converted everything over to decimals and kept two to three significant digits the whole time. If you want more precision, you can use fractions and then convert to a decimal once you get to your final answer. So now we can just use Ohm's law just like before to figure out what the current's going to be. So I figured a grand total of 5.71 amps of current. Now if you've been paying attention, you'd know that because this is a parallel circuit and because we have a constant voltage source right here, we'll actually have 12 volts across every resistor and you can actually just use Ohm's law by itself and figure out what the current going through each one of these resistors are and then just add up the resistors to find out what the current coming from your power supply is going to be. However, this only works in certain situations. What if we had a resistor right here? What do you think would happen? The voltage here would no longer be constant. And because the voltage is no longer constant, you can't use that simplification to do the math. So yeah. Alright, now let's go ahead and look at a realistic application for using this type of math. Now about a month ago, I needed a lithium battery tester to test my 3S LiPo battery for my quadcopter. I wanted something small, light, and portable but also made with some junk parts I happen to have in my junk bins. And this is the solution that I came up with. You can see here I've got four reference voltages that correspond to the charge of the battery that's under test. The heart of the circuit are these four comparators here. I actually have six in the final circuit, but for simplicity I've only drawn four here. 
and you can see the comparator's job is to compare the reference voltage to the battery's voltage and then drive the LEDs accordingly. So when the voltage is less than 3 volts or at 3 volts, this lamp will be either off or just barely on respectively. And the same goes for 3.4 volts in this LED, 3.8 volts in this LED, and 4.2 volts in this LED. Now in order to get these reference voltages perfect, I had to do a lot of tuning and playing around with resistor values, and also a lot of math and calculations to figure out what the resistors are supposed to be. So here's how I went about doing it. The first thing I did was figure out what the voltage drop across all of these resistors has to be in order to make these voltages true. You can see here the voltage drop between this point and this point has to be 3 volts in order for the circuit to work. So we can draw a delta 3 volts for here. Now you can see the voltage drop across this resistor between this point and this point has to be the difference between 3.4 and 3 volts so we would say this has a voltage drop of 400 millivolts and of course we'll do the same thing for here the difference between 3.8 and 3.4 is again 0.4 volts and the same thing up here the difference between 3.8 and 4.2 is also 0.4 so now that we know what the voltage drop across these resistors are and what current is flowing through all of the resistors it becomes very easy to calculate what resistors we need using Ohm's law now right here, I've drawn out just the reference portion of the previous circuit. You can see here I've written out my voltages, and of course the voltage drops across the resistor with the 1 milliamp current source. So as it turns out, calculating these resistor values is actually very easy. Alright, here's the values that I've calculated. We're going to need a 3 kilo ohm resistor for down here. And then for the rest of these three resistors, we're going to need 400 ohms of resistance. Now when it came to actually building the circuit, I've ran into quite a few problems. For starters, I didn't even have any of the resistor values that we calculated earlier. So I had to improvise a little. So instead of using three 400 ohm resistors, I ended up using six 200 ohm resistors, with two of them being put in series, so that way they add up to a total of 400 ohms. And that works reasonably well. The only problem is that they're 5% resistors, and every single one of them is a little bit higher than their rated value. In fact, they read out on my multimeter to be about 201 ohms. And also, I couldn't find a 3K resistor, I had to use a 3.01K resistor. Luckily, it's a high precision resistor, so it's very accurate. Now, as for my current source, you can see I decided to use a 7805 voltage regulator that has a constant voltage output of 5 volts. I then went ahead and used a variable resistor so that I can adjust the amount of current that's going through here so it's 1 milliamp for thereabouts. So now here's the circuit built up in real life and here's my multimeter showing the voltage. Notice as I wind it up to about 3 volts, you'll see the first LED come on. It comes on just a little bit before 3 volts. As we continue to wind it up to 3.4 volts, you should see that that comes on around about 3.4 volts. And then 3.8 volts, the yellow LED should come on. And then right up at 4.2 volts, we should see the green LED come on. So anyway, I hope you found this video useful and now fully understand simple, series, and parallel circuits. This has been a PowerMax production. If you like what I do, please like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to check out my other videos too.